So audience, let's reset the room. We are here with Alia Ali, who is uh, who will share her journey of courage and healing through the experience of a suicide loss. She's a passionate, passionate uh, suicide awareness um, advocate. So I'm really, really looking forward to to listen to her about this taboo, taboo topic of the suicide. And uh, yeah, I'm just waiting for your share. Please okay. uh, go ahead and and introduce the topic maybe we can also introduce a little bit you so <laughs> more from okay. your own words <laughs> all right um before i start i just want to make sure i know where to can i sh shall i share the screen now or oh yes you can you just uh, put the share button okay uh i don't know what it is okay share, uh, and then share you just right choose now. the document and it will appear on the screen Okay, please bear with me. Uh... <laughs> no, the answer is preparing <laughs> the fingers for the questions. No worries. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. What do I do now? Uh, yeah, you have I... to choose the uh, PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay. Thanks Let for me your patience. First, just try again. Yes, just choose the PowerPoint. So for the audience until then, just think it through uh, what... Uh, are the things that you're interested in in this topic? What are the things that you have in your head? All the questions and everything around it. And um, let's just write it in the in the in the comments. This is a hard topic, so maybe for some of you it, it takes a little bit of time to get some bravery and then and, and write some comments. But please do so because Alia is a is is Alia knows this topic from experience. So she is the pr a person who, who will answer all your questions. Oh my goodness. Uh, no problem. Just choose the choose the document. And then once you choose the document, then uh, you can just uh, okay. share it. So basically you can share your screen. And when you share your screen, it offers you the option to choose uh, your entire screen or a Chrome tab or a Yay. presentation. Okay, perfect. Okay. Oh my goodness! Sorry, no I'm problem. just one technically savvy. Can you um can you see me or can you see my slide or you? We can see you on the side also. Yes, thank you. Oh, okay, because <laughs> I can't I can't see myself, but that's fine. All right, thank you, Andrea. Thank you so much for um being patient with me. I'm wearing um a colorful and flowery shirt um just to let. Um, everyone know out there that even though I am a suicide loss survivor, even though that um, this is going to be um, somewhat um, heavy topic, but I will try my best to make it light. And, um, you know, I hope everyone will um, share um, my my journey. Uh, it's not uh, it's not for us to be sad or uh, upset about it, but it's 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 something uh, it's a story for us to take um, to, to learn from so that, um, you know, we are aware of our surrounding and we um, can uh, provide help or assistance and um, be aware of um, the people who are struggling with mental health um, within our surroundings, yeah. Um, I will start with my name again. I'm uh, Alia Ali. I am also known as, fondly known actually as Kakna. Uh, can you try to say that, uh, Andrea? Kakna is. Oh, okay. Is it's it's quite uh, difficult to pronounce, but uh, in in uh, my advocacy name is usually Kakna, um, and uh, the topic I'm going to be, be be talking about is about breaking the silence um, issues on um, suicide loss. Yeah, so I am actually the founder of AWAS. AWAS stands for Awareness Against um, Suicide. Um, if you can see, if you've ever been in Malaysia, I understand this is a, a global um, su summit, so people are listening from all over the world. But if you've ever been on the roads, on the road in Malaysia, driving in Malaysia or walking or taking the bus in Malaysia, you will see these signs, this triangle signs that say that says awas. Um, Awas means, actually, it literally means, uh, in Malay, in my language, in Malaysian language, it means um, caution or beware um, or be careful, you know. Um, so it's it's a local word, but it's also an abbreviation for Awareness Against Suicide, which I am the founder of Awas. Um, and 
AWAS is actually a program under Yayasan Zurat Care. Yayasan is foundation, so um, the foundation name is Zurat Care, um, where uh, AWAS uh, has three main objectives. We do um, suicide awareness uh, programs, um, suicide prevention uh, programs. Um, we support uh, or help uh, people who are, um, you know, who are who are hopeless, who have um, lost hope, uh, and um, um, thinking about ending their lives, as well as uh, postvention programs. We do postvention programs. Postvention is not um, is fairly new, especially in Malaysia. Postvention is when there's a suicide death occurs uh, in a community, whether it's a school, a uh, workplace, university, um, even residential area. We would come and provide uh, emotional support, um, community support uh, for the people who are traumatized or who have lost loved ones to suicide. Okay, um, like I said, uh, awas means uh, take heed or beware or um, be caution. So this is about, you know, awareness on um, suicide. A little bit about me. Um, I am actually, uh, like I said, uh, name, known as Kak Nga. Uh, I am also a bachelor's degree. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology, minoring in sociology um, from Michigan, USA. Uh, I did my development studies in culture change um, from New South Wales, Australia. Uh, I'm currently employed as a real estate negotiator. So um, AWAS is actually my advocacy work, my volunteer work. It's something I do. I'm really passionate about it. Uh, I'm a mental health advocate because of um, my loss uh, uh, my experience um, with uh, my losing a loved one to suicide. So I am going to be sharing um, or talking about uh, my point of view today is, is from the angle of a person who is standing up to stigma on mental illness and suicide and be the bringer of hope to anyone affected from both sides. When I say both sides, meaning um, either from the side of a survivor or somebody who has left, uh, being left behind uh, by suicide, or somebody who are struggling with a mental health uh, condition, because I've been on both sides, yeah. And um, also, um, I want everybody to know that I am just a humble messenger. Um, I'm sharing my story because um, it has affected me. Um, suicide has impacted my life really uh, so much. Um, it has changed my life, um, hopefully to better. Um, of course, it didn't. It didn't. Um, I I didn't become better, or I didn't become the mental health advocate I am today. Um, instantly, it was a long process. I lost a loved one to suicide about ten years ago. Uh, that's almost a decade. So I went through a very long process of healing journey. I'm also a daughter, a sister, a wife, a mother of two, and um, uh, like I said, a mental. Uh, health advocate with uh, lived experience. Um, when I say lived experience, I have um, had the experience of being diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, um, suicide loss. Um, I've experienced that and also um, through my journey, throughout my journey of healing, um, I had developed MDD uh, or major depressive disorder and generalized um, anxiety disorder. So, um, it was a really long and painful journey, but um, you know, um, today uh, I am here to share my story and to let people know that there is hope. Um, there is such thing as post-traumatic growth, um, despite um, despite the fall, despite the pain, despite the trauma. Uh, we all um, have uh, means and ways to stand back up and um, to fight and, and to, to keep going again. All right, so just a disclaimer, I am not a clinical psychologist, not a therapist, uh, not a licensed counsellor. Uh, ours is not a counselling centre uh, and not um, we don't even do a crisis helpline. Um, but it, yes, but it is a programme to promote suicide awareness, prevention, prevention. It's a safe space created to end stigma and promote healing by and for individuals impacted by suicide. Uh, a safe space for individuals struggling with mental health issues, provide support group for suicide loss survivors, and it's a platform um, to gain a bite-sized mental health tips and support. Um, for uh, all your information, um, 
there are when I um, started this journey as a as a suicide loss survivor, when I became a suicide loss survivor, um, I tried to look for help, tried to look for support, but there was none. Um, in Malaysia, it's such a taboo um, to talk about it, to speak about it, um, even to talk about mental health. You know, not a lot of people are ready um, to talk about mental health. Um, so uh, when I lost a loved one 10 years ago, um, I I couldn't find a um, support group um, for suicide loss survivors. Um, I went to uh, um, uh, I went to to seek for help, but um, the only help I could find was uh, through um, psychologist or psychiatrist. So there were none um, none uh, for suicide loss survivors, um, and it was really a painful journey. I went to this association um, championing. Uh, for suicide, but um, they took my number. Um, I told them my story, what happened, and they took my number and told me that you know we are really sorry. We don't have any support for suicide loss survivors. Um, you know, perhaps one day, you know, we will call you and let you know if there's any. And uh, ten years has passed. Almost ten years has passed um, until today. They haven't called me back. And um, uh, because of that, um, after becoming well, I decided to start one uh, through AWAS. I decided to start a support. Uh, group for suicide loss survivors. So basically, it's um, probably to, uh, it's probably safe for me to say that um, through AWAS, uh, support for suicide loss survivors um, are here now, and uh, it's the first um, suicide loss survivor support group um, from peer uh, to peer. That means from people who have lost, um, who have experienced the loss, uh, for the people who have. Um, uh, lost loved ones to suicide. So before we go further on, I would like um, to, you know, just do a little bit of trigger warning and house rules. Um, uh, a trigger refers to something that affects your emotional state, um, often significantly by causing extreme feeling of overwhelm or distress. So if any point of time, uh, when I, the, during my sharing of story, telling of story, if you ever, if you feel uncomfortable, or if you feel like, you know, this is too much, or um, it's upsetting you, um, please, um, by all means, uh, you are welcome uh, to not continue um, this session. Um, it is okay to leave the session when feeling triggered or uh, uncomfortable with the topic uh, discussed. And please, um, it is advisable. Um, I would like to say compulsory um, for you know for people to speak uh, with a counselor or therapist or doctor if you really feel upset or disturbed by the things that um, uh, the things that we shall discuss. Yeah. So yeah, I hope we have an agreement and thank you for staying safe. Um, I'm going to begin my journey of um, uh, sharing my story of courage and healing. Uh, like I said, 10 years ago, I lost a loved one to suicide. Um, it was a really traumatic journey and I'm still scared talking about it. Um, although I have started this um, mental health um, advocacy work um, since since. April 2020, so fairly new. Um, I started with a lot of doubt, self-doubt, fear um, because of the stigma. Uh, not only um, um, not only people, uh, Malaysians or people are uncomfortable talking about um, suicide and mental health. I had my own self-stigma. Um, like I started um, earlier, I told um, that uh, I've shared that I am a a graduate uh, of psychology, right? And because of that, um, because because of my mm, degree in psychology, um, it made me feel like um, it made me feel like I'm a failure, like I have failed to protect my loved one. Um, so. Um, so it has made me feel like I'm a failure and fail to protect my loved one. Um, uh, even though with the degree in psychology and some experience working in a uh, mental health facilities, I have actually worked in a um, um, psychiatric hospital before. That did not that did not make me realize the struggle that my loved one um, was going through. Um, perhaps again because of the stigma, and um, when I lost, when I lost my loved one, 
it was really um, it was really difficult uh, for me to digest the whole process. Um, I did not immediately process my trauma. Um, unfortunately, um, the pictures, the videos um, of what my loved one was being leaked, and it was all over social media. It was um, a really painful journey, and because of the culture, because of the religion, because of the mentality, um, 10 years ago, there was not a lot of mental health, um, uh, there was not a lot of awareness on mental health, um, people were judging, people were saying awful things, people were, um, you know, saying that, uh, you know, he was low life, he was, um, you know, he's going to hell, and uh, things like that, so um, it was really painful, um, it was traumatizing, not only um, I had to deal with the loss, the pain of loss, um, but the trauma that comes with it, you know, the trauma that, you know, um, there was no privacy, um, people were talking about it, um, people were judging and people were being mean and nasty and stigmatizing, um, uh, stigmatizing um, my loved one and also um, me as the survivor. So here um, I'm going to be sharing um, the uh, enduring risk factors. Um, I uh, I got this from uh, this is, was adopted from Dr. Ng Ming Queen, a psychiatrist that um, I was worked together with uh, sometimes, especially uh, for post prevention programs. Um, this was this is. Uh, the risk factors, the endure, the enduring risk factors. Um, if we if, if we look at if we look at the diagram here, we can see that um, in the individual um, space here, you know, there are many reasons for suicide. Um, sometimes it's personality, such as impulsivity, or um, the history of previous suicide attempt. Um, uh, some people have men are struggling with mental disorders. Um, uh, alcohol or substance abuse, hopelessness, chronic pain illness, um, even genetic or biological factors. Um, and as we know, uh, during this pandemic, a lot of people have lost uh, jobs, uh, financial loss, um, you know, um, livelihoods. Uh, and, you know, they are affected and impacted. And then there's another circle of community where, you know, trauma and abuse happen in um, either institution level or, you know, um, discrimination happens, uh, disaster, war and conflict, stresses of um, acculturation and dis uh, dislocation for some people. Um, and also uh, there's society, the bubble within the society. Um, people sometimes uh, have problems accessing to means, um, accessing to mental health, um, uh, care, uh, inappropriate media reporting, uh, like I said earlier, you know, um, uh, unfortunately, the pictures and the videos were leaked, the information were leaked, um, everything was leaked, and, and um, in the case of my loved one, and, and it was all over um, uh, the social media, and because of that, um, you know, it, um, it, it, it brings about a lot of other risk um, for the survivors. Um, you know, um, research shows that suicide loss survivors are actually uh, at high risk of being suicidal themselves um, because, you know, because of the stigma, because of the shame, because of the pain, because of the guilt. Um, I was dealing with a lot of guilt. Um, I felt like, you know, like I said, I... I I should have known being a psychology um, major. I should have known being someone who has worked in a in a in a psychiatric hospital. I should have known. So there was a lot of guilt, a um, lot of self punishment, and um, for a long, long time, I was angry at myself, and there was a lot of self hatred too. And I guess because of that, I developed um, uh, depression and uh, anxiety and all that. And and um, uh, until until I became until I struggled with my own um, um, uh, suicidal thoughts, um, I was becoming scared of my own um, situation. That was the time I actually uh, sought help. I being you know like I said, being a psychology major has 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 shamed. Uh, I shamed myself. Um, I was embarrassed because you know I feel like I. I did not do what I was supposed to do, and um, 
but um, to the point where when I had a panic attack, I couldn't breathe. Um, I was driving. I remember I was driving on the on the road on the highway, and I had to pull over, park the car on the side of the road because I was sweating profusely. Um, you know, having um, um, my my heart was beating really fast and and I was just scared and confused and, and anxious, you know, for no reason. You know, there was no no one honking me, no one disturbing me on the road or anything like that. But but that was the time when I was also like forgetting things. You know, I would go into the bathroom, um, uh, turn the tap on and leave the bathroom without, you know, shutting the tap. Um, you know, things like that, losing keys and I couldn't wake up. Um, there was... Um, I was depressed and there was no energy. I didn't have um, energy to wake up in the morning uh, to send my kids to school. I was just sad. I had bouts of um, bouts of tears. I would cry randomly, and you know. And we're not talking about immediately after losing a loved one because I pretended for a long time. And I think people who are struggling with their mental health, they would pretend that they're okay. You know, they would try to hide it and. Um, you know, push it down and, you know, try to manage it and pretend like they're okay, um, distract themselves. I did. I did all of that, of course. But um, after another grief hits, um, when I lost um, my dad, um, um, it was a natural death, um, but still uh, I lost my dad uh, to cancer. So there was another grief and the whole, you know, the whole thing was like, um, underneath was like magma, was like, lava ready to explode and it did explode um you know it became uh, uh, anxiety and panic attacks and that was the time i went to the doctor i decided to um being advised by friends i decided to go and seek for help and i feel that seeking for help is one of the best things that i have made one of the best decisions that i have made in my life and um and and through this, through my story, I would love to send a message to everyone that please do not wait um, to seek help. Uh, do not uh, be shamed or embarrassed or worried about, um, you know, what would people say or, you know, what would people think of me, um, especially on this side of the world, especially uh, in Malaysia or, on, or um, uh, in the Asian side, I guess, um, you know, people are um, afraid of what other people would think of them. Um, people are, um, uh, you know, it's it's highly stigmatized. It's such a um, taboo topic. Um, of course, it's changing now, but I feel like um, I too must play a role in standing up and sharing my story. Um, although afraid, although um, I'm scared, but um, I feel like self-advocacy is very important and people must know that it's okay. You know, it's okay. Um, to reach out for help and it's really important to not wait until you know things get worse right so yeah so um looking at this looking at the risk factors there are many 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 layers there is not one factor um to to suicide you know um there are many risk factors many layers of it um it's like you know here it's like um okay by the way i should give credit i took this um from the internet but it's like um the english uh saying um the feather that broke the camel's back right it's not one feather or the straw that broke the camel's back it not it's not one straw uh, not one straw that can be break the camel's back but it's actually um a duration of heavy load of straw for a long long time that could actually break the camel's back, right? And suicide is the result of a complex interaction of risk factors, including but not limited to genetic, psychological, social, and cultural risk factors, um, sometimes combined with experience of experiences of trauma and loss. So um, let's be careful and let's be mindful. Uh, let's not judge others who are struggling with their mental health. Um, uh, and even if we are struggling with mental health, um, don't don't judge ourselves for for being um for for being weak or for not being able to um you know to be to be as uh, capable or as competent um as other people because you know it's a, it's an illness right we wouldn't say that to people who are struggling with cancer people who ha are have been diagnosed with cancer or diabetes or you know any any kind of illness um for um, as a matter of fact, right? Uh, we wouldn't say that to um, a person struggling with a physical illness, 
illness, um, you know, nasty things. So why would we say um, to people who are struggling with their mental health, uh, you know, um, things like, oh, you're just lazy or things like, oh, you know, you don't pray enough or things like, um, or you're just making this up for attention and things like that. And please um, believe me, um, I too thought um, my loved one was seeking for attention. Um, I too thought that, um, you know, oh, this, he's just struggling. This will pass, you know, um, it's just a, a phase, I thought. And I was wrong. I was really wrong. Um, and um, not a day goes by that I do not think of him. I do not think of my loved one. And uh, this regret um, um, is, is there forever um, within me um, and for the rest of my life, I know. But um, I'm trying my best to transform, um, to transform this wound um, into wisdom and to transform this pain into, pur into a purpose. So that's why I... Uh, I started Awas. And um, here's also a nice diagram. I feel like um, when people are struggling, you know, we should we should speak less and listen more. That's the reason why God um, give us two ears and one ear, uh, one mouth. Uh, two ears is for us to listen more and uh, speak uh, less, right? I often feel supported if people listen to him with empathy rather than prematurely offering of advice or solutions. Um, or, sorry, him or her, you know. People uh, often feel, feel supported uh, when uh, there's empathy, when people don't judge them, when people don't ridicule them or dismiss them um, or try to offer um, uh, premature advices or solutions. So that's very important. Um, uh, if we know anyone struggling um, or if we ourselves are struggling with our mental health, um, let's go and find people who are willing to listen more uh, than people who are going to just, you know, brush us off or, um, you know, tell us that, you know, um, uh, you know, dismiss us or things that are you know, unpleasant to hear, right? Because it's painful when we're already struggling with our mental health, when we are already um, in pain, we want um, we want uh, other people to listen to us and validate our emotions, validate our feelings and and not judge us, right? So um, basically today I um, either than the you know the awareness of um, suicide or um, uh, to share about um, my uh, personal, journey as a suicide loss survivor, I would also want to invite and encourage everyone here um, to know that, you know, everything we want is um, actually on the other side of fear. Uh, this quote actually um, uh, spoke to me um, when I was really um, struggling, was, uh, when I was trying to find um, um, the reason, you know, when I was trying to find an answer to, to what happened to me, you know, why 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 this thing happened why why do i have to deal with this suicide loss you know why this good thing why does good things happen to uh, why does bad things happen to good people you know and things like that right um sometimes we wonder we question life we question god and things like that but but um this quote um struck me and uh, and and I feel like the only thing that could change all this, all this mess um, uh, with regards to mental health is stigma, is to challenge stigma, is to um, challenge the stat status quo. Uh, and um, when we challenge the stigma, when we stand up to stigma, you know, um, uh, people, other people who, who are listening or who, who are also dealing with stigma would feel like they're not alone, you know, would we'll feel like, yeah, stigma is wrong. Why, you know, why do we, why do we, why do we hold on to stigma, right? Because um, stigma is the one who's being people from getting the help because of the fear, because of the shame, um, you know, because of, um, because of stigma. So um, I would like to, you know, to ask um, everyone here, uh, I asked this question myself: um, What would I love? What would I want from this? You know, from losing um, my loved one to suicide, nothing can bring him back now, right? But I would love to see change. Definitely, I want change to happen in Malaysia, in my society, uh, among the Muslim communities, among 
among people everywhere in the world. I want, I want stigma to stop. Um, I want ch- change to happen, and for it to happen, um, I realize that I can't just not do anything. I realize that I can't just, you know, um, be in silence and suffer in silence, right? So. Um, this fear is holding me back the fear of being judged the fear of 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 um of having a, a mental disorder the fear of of not being capable to to live life um normally um and i realize that um that stigma can be challenged through courage um you know to speaking up um, and I would love to um, share this message that that we all can make a difference by um, by standing up to stigma when we are ready, of course. Um, so um, things uh, to know about issues on suicide. Um, research has shows that it is better to talk or it's better to ask. Don't please don't be afraid to ask if someone is suicidal. If someone is, we think we we think that that person is struggling uh, with their mental health. Um, people who have suicidal thoughts or plans uh, are relieved actually when someone knows about them and is able to help them um, because you know they are ambivalent. It's not like set in stone. It's not like when they have decided to take their life you know they would they are still ambivalent there is room for us to convince them that you know um this is not the end of it um uh, there is still hope and things like that and please um um the reason why i'm sharing my story is because i want uh, people to learn from my mistake um uh, i saw those signs honestly i saw those warning signs um of suicide um of my loved one and and you know, but but I I I didn't take heed. I didn't I didn't um I didn't do anything about it. I really thought I honestly thought that it would just go away. You know, these symptoms or these struggles would just go away. Um, like most of us. So, um, so I would really want people to know that you know to take mental health um issues seriously. Uh, people who are struggling, um, they might. We never know which straw is their last straw uh, that could break um, uh, the camel's back, so to speak. Yeah. So, um, and people who attempt suicide uh, are not seeking uh, attention. Um, this is also the mistake I made. Uh, I've made, and I've learned from it. And I wish people don't not do not have to go through it in order to understand or learn it. Uh, please learn um, from uh, my story. So this pretty much is a sharing of. Um, uh, not only um, uh, a sharing on suicide awareness, um, it's also um, a message or sharing on self-advocacy. Um, mental health is as important as physical health. Um, please take it seriously. Um, in order to love who we are, we cannot hate the experiences that shaped us. And I learned for, I learned that too. Um, for a long time, I hated my experience of being a for losing a loved one to suicide. For a long time, I was angry, angry at, every, at everything, everyone, you know, every single thing. Uh, and and because of that, I, you know, there was so much hatred in me and I was in a lot of pain. Um, so, um, and later on, I learned that I cannot do this. I cannot do this to myself. I cannot keep punishing myself. And, you know, we have to, we have to start, I have to start learning to learn from the mistakes and um, do something about it and learn uh, and change it, uh, change this pain um, into a purpose. Um, that's my take from my um, my uh, suicide loss experience. And do know that everyone matters. Uh, don't let anyone invalidate our feelings or the traumatic experiences that we have or have gone through. Yeah, so um, um, this is not my number. It's actually the uh, the hotline number. Um, uh, it's not a hotline. You cannot call. Uh, Awas. Uh, it's a. It's a. It's Awas number for uh, texting for people to encourage people to uh, reach out for help and ask for tips or mental health tips or where to. Um, uh, it, we even have people from all over the world, you know, talking to us, contacting. It's really nice to be connected with other suicide law survivors. We have a support group and it's not only men for Malaysians. So, you know, it's a little community community for supporting and encouraging each other to um, 
uh, to be well and uh, support uh, each other's uh, grief and healing journey. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, I would leave uh, some room for question if there's any. Um, thank you for listening to my story. Um, like I said, um, I'm still doing this scared. Um, it's been it's been a, um, a very uh, painful but amazing journey for me. Um, I learned to love life now. Um, and I wish that um, everyone um, who are struggling um, to know that there is hope, um, you know, and this topic is about let's, being, let's be bold together, right? And um, this is me being bold. This is me standing up to stigma. This is me sharing my story. And I really hope um, that um, I leave everyone here with some hope, uh, some love, um, and know that you know, um, we all can uh, change, um, can always choose to transform um, our our pain into purpose. And and, and if, even if we do not want to advocate, um, you know, um, for anything, but we can still, please remember that we can still change our, transform our wound into wisdom. Thank you. So yeah. So I'm I'm coming back with my voice. So thank you very much for this. It's uh, it's really <laughs> really a deep share, and I know that it's a heavy topic, but I really wanted to make it happen. I'm I'm really. Um, really admire all of you uh, for your power for your for your strength and for what you do for others to not to get into the same situation and to help those who are getting into this situation because everyone gets hurt in this process so it's really really important to raise awareness and i think the audience is also having the same um, same opinion so everyone is saying thank you very much uh, quality awareness makes the most difference uh, then Jagatis is saying, um, Alia, the quote resonated with me. I'm a, I'm a woman um, of few words, but I listen more and learn more. And we have Sim Fong saying, I read many Facebook posts each day, especially from friends. And if I, ident if I identify undertone in the message, I would message or call them and uh, check whether they are okay. Yeah. And then we have Noor Zia Tulakma Manap. <laughs> <laughs> and she's saying great sharing, Alia. And Anis is also saying thank you very much for sharing. And Jagatis is also coming back. So mm -hmm. if you have any questions, we still have a few minutes. So please feel free to type it into the comments. Um, and I'm sure that Alia <laughs> will answer all of the questions. Uh, Udomna is also saying hi. So yes, please feel free to ask your questions. We have around uh, 10 minutes uh, left. Uh, for for the questions, so if you if you want to ask anything, <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Andrea, for this opportunity. I hope I did not um, bring the gray clouds with me. You know, I you know um, I know this is a heavy topic, but um, I feel it is also a hopeful topic. You know, at the same time. So yeah. No, I think the delivery was amazing because it, it, you were touching everything. It was really insightful, and you you g gave a lot of. Uh, a lot of hope, but at the same time, you shared your own experience and you also shared uh, places where people can go if they have something, because that's the most important, right, uh, to, to reach out, because some people don't reach out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and suffer in silence, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So yeah, it's we, really... we all are guilty of that sometimes, right? <laughs> <laughs> So Udomna is uh, asking a question. I would like to know if it is wrong to have a uh, lone time when worried about things, like being alone. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Um, I don't think so. Um, I think alone time is necessary, um, in my opinion. Um, but as long as we do not suffer alone, you know, as long as we are not suffering in silence alone, that's that's the key word here. That's the key thing. That's a key point here. Because being alone, I, I am an introvert, so I appreciate being alone. It 
for me being alone is necessary because it will help me recharge you know being around people too much drain me so i would love sitting alone you know doing my reading or you know doing things by myself you know that will help me but um when you are struggling alone that's another thing when you are suffering alone that's when um you know everything becomes bigger you know all your pain becomes bigger and then uh it becomes dangerous if if because everyone has mental health not everyone has mental disorder but if we do not take care of it if we let if we let the trauma or let the pain you know um keep circling in our mind and not have an outlet to share or to speak about it right because sometimes when we are so stressed out or so depressed we don't we can't see the mm-hmm. light at the end of the tunnel we're not able to so so having our own listening to our own thoughts can be dangerous and and suffering alone is dangerous um it's not healthy so it's really important um to you know to seek help when you are suffering um but alone time i feel is okay is even good um, i think if you enjoy long time then enjoy it <laughs> right right <laughs> if you don't enjoy then reach out <laughs> exactly thank you that's in few words you helped me to yeah that's true. that's true <laughs> yeah i learned to summarize with these three weeks of interviews <laughs> <laughs> thank you that's good <laughs> so we have yeah. that to ali i was so here supporting from the background so the advocacy on mental health awareness and suicide prevention needs and con- can continue when we join forces to support to understand the need to listen and refer them to the right people to support. She's also doing an amazing job in this uh, is field, so I'm really, really happy to have her on board. And there are more questions coming in from Udumna from Africa. So do you think every problem demands discussing it with others? Um, I think it depends on, because you know, you know what you're struggling with, right? Uh, and you know your surrounding. Uh, in my case, I, because um, suicide, um, suffering with a suicide loss was not a norm it's you know people don't people don't talk about it here so i was not i didn't have that outlet to to talk about it so so but at the same time i was i was in pain in a lot of pain you know i was i did not process my trauma so i realized that when i started to i actually started i was anonymously i went online i was looking for other suicide loss survivors because there weren't any um people advocating or uh, suicide loss survivors advocating in malaysia you know there was zero support then um perhaps individual there was i don't know but there was no support group so um so yeah uh, i uh, for me i needed the room the safe space to um discuss about about this and and i realized by us normalizing about things taboo topics you know uh, it becomes healthy it becomes educational you know it's not about you know talking about other people it's not about trying to put other people down but it's about educational things that we need to discuss about like sexual topics uh, you know here in malaysia too like you know um children you know if you don't talk to them about it you don't normalize these things um then they will find things on the internet even about suicide even about mental health you know they might learn the wrong things on the internet so it's important to discuss about it i feel you know but also it's important to find the right people uh right resources uh to discuss about it yeah i think kudumna has a lot of lot of question <laughs> okay <laughs> where uh, being hard work and independent but mocked for no big results uh, should they withdraw or keep pushing wow where being hard work and independent but mocked for no big results should they withdraw or keep pushing i think that's a question you have to ask yourself um 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 it really it really differ from person to person um it depends on how much you want it you know for example uh, in my case again i can only relate to my case in the case of suicide uh, being a suicide loss survivor people don't talk about this this is not a norm this is not a normalized it's it's still a taboo topic but because i want it so bad uh, you know people you know have have said awful things to me people have discouraged me even a psychiatrist even a mental health expert has told me uh, has stopped me has discouraged me from being an being a mental health advocate because of the stigma he told me that you are going to you know you are going to get a lot of nasty 
remarks you know which has happened but because i want to i want it so much i want it so bad and it's a question that you have to ask yourself nina you know if you want it so bad perhaps only you know if you need to withdraw or keep pushing and in my case i want to keep on pushing because i want change to happen you know and another thing in malaysia it's still illegal you can be de- you can be a you can be criminalized for attempting suicide if you survive uh, under the law um people who are um who are caught you know who, uh, who attempt suicide and um and survive will be either sent to jail or um or be penalized be fined you know um so you know talking about it being an advocate about this about suicide and mental health and things like this will hopefully push the agenda and make a difference so again because i want this um and it's a question you have to ask yourself uh are you you know do you still want it do you want to keep on pushing or do you want to re- withdraw for your mental health sake it's really you know it's really uh, a question you have to ask yourself <laughs> thank you very much let's k- take a take a easier question first and then we go <laughs> back to the to the harder questions so <laughs> Sinbong is asking for your LinkedIn contact do you have a LinkedIn so that they can connect with you or reach out uh, if they have questions yes to be honest I have registered my friend keep on telling me you should start Alia you should start I started LinkedIn <laughs> I have registered but I haven't you know um, posted anything yet um, but Awas is in there and LinkedIn uh, Alia Alia Ali is in there um, I will try I will promise after this I will try to you know to be more active on LinkedIn yeah Thanks. let me just say I, uh, in this little thing under the screen the moving screen you can see Alia's name so you can search for her there <laughs> yes. and we are also we are also uh, Awas is also on Instagram and Facebook um Yeah. So you remember the Malaysian sign A W A S and then you will find on Instagram and then you can go from there. Um uh, what's the next question? Let me see. Um when is being strong too much? Oh wow. <laughs> Do you want to help me there? Uh Andrea? Um again it's a question you have to ask yourself. Um I I I I I really don't know. I um if you feel like your mental health is at stake, I think being strong uh uh being strong too much is 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 it. Um I um and also define what being strong means. You know, some people think being strong is you know, is 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 standing up to something or or keep fighting or you know, but um some people retreating retreating or giving up um for for example um if you have uh, or if someone is in a abusive relationship with their partner with their husband right um you know do you want to stay strong and be in a relationship or do you want to stay strong and say you know this is it this is my limit this is my boundary i shall not take it so we need to define as women or you know uh, people human beings we need to define what is important to us um strong can mean a lot of things to other people to different people so define what strong means to you and know what is right for you because you are going to live your life and not um anybody else yeah i could just add two things like being strong um is it means that you are you're not getting hurt while being strong emotionally or physically that's okay because you can stand up for yourself you can be strong alone you can do a lot of things for yourself until you are not getting hurt emotionally or physically and the other thing is um when you are being strong it should it has to be real for you not strong and fake and a lie so be very honest for yourself whether that strong is is really you and you are that's your belief that yeah. you have to be strong in that situation and you have to be true to yourself in that situation right so that would be my thing and then yeah one more question she's a curious lady <laughs> <laughs> is there a tendency of a repeated suicide in a family line or environment where suicide occurred once definitely um after losing a loved one to suicide i have um there aren't a lot of uh, resources in malaysia unfortunately on on being a suicide loss survivor um so i had to import my resources from the amazon i went online um 
um, there's such thing as bibliotherapy. So I went to read and read and read, try to understand more, try to understand my healing journey and all that. But yes, uh, I found that um, there is repeated suicide in a family line. Um, there is no genetic for suicide. Um, they haven't found or there is none. But there is a genetic um, tendency for uh, mental uh, illness. So because... 80%, 18 to 90% of um, suicide death uh, happens uh, by people who are struggling with a mental health disorder. So that means um, it also runs in the family. You know, you know what I mean? Uh, am I making sense, Andrea? Um, like, basically, uh, if you have uh, mental illness or mental health problems in the family line, you know, it's also something that you need to worry about because it can happen in the family. Um, because mental people who are struggling with mental health disorder have this tendency to take their life. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh. <laughs> more and more. <laughs> She's a very powerful uh, um, African lady. So you yes. should see her. She's like super, super strong lady. Maybe that's why she's so interested in these topics. So okay. she's saying, I guess those that are strong uh, don't know when they lock, lock in and fight alone to make things happen, even when their strength is gone. They believe in fighting to win and won't stop until they drop dread. That's but, a very um, strong taste statement for this it, afternoon. It, it, is, it is very strong, but I would like to end this with, is it worth it? You know, at the end of the day, um, it, it depends on whether or not we find it worth it. Because if we stay strong, whatever that means, right? If we keep on being strong, but it causes damage to other things, you know, mm -hmm. either our, our own mental health or our children's mental health or, you know, whatever, whatever that means. Um, so... Is it worth being strong? You know, um, it, it's something that we have to ponder and think about um, and redefine what is important to us, what is important, because what is important, for instance, right, um, in my generation, um, my parents or my family, you know, the, the older generation, we don't, they don't talk about suicide or, you know, but things must change with me, I feel, because I want my children, you know, the younger generation to understand that it's okay to reach out. You know, there is no shame in reaching out for help or struggling with mental health, you know, but those days people don't talk. It's like, no, you know, it's, it's, you don't talk about your mental health, you know, things like that. So, so, you know, which side do you want to be, you know, and it's up to you to define it, redefine it uh, and understand, you know, what strong means to you. I feel, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. So I shared your Instagram, I mean, Avas, A-V-A-W-A-S Instagram here. So you can just click on that link. And we ha we take one more question from, from Sing Fong, because, because it's a bit specific. So it would be interesting to, to answer it. Asperger syndrome, sufferers have suicidal tendency. Have you dealt with any before? Uh, no, to be very honest, I've ha I have not um, dealt with any before. Um, however, having said that, when I was working at a mental institution in in hospital, right? um, once upon a time, I was working in a in a psychiatric hospital. Um, uh, there was a lot of, um, uh, specifically if you were asking about Asperger, uh, individuals with Asperger syndrome, they were also struggling with other um, uh, like emotional issues and um, psychological issues. But I have not met um, uh, anyone with um, suicidal tendency. Yeah. But I won't be surprised if there's any because it, you know, people who are struggling with mental health issues would have that tendency anyway so yeah I thank you very answer. much uh, we have one more comment from Udumna mental illness is worth being taught uh, deeply in our world everyone needs the knowledge thank you very much Udumna for being here thank you also Simfong and thank you Jag and Nana and uh, everyone and also Datualia for joining in and supporting uh, this course and uh, we will keep on continuing uh, we have a crisis room set up for every Sunday with official counselors uh, so if you know someone who has problems or you yourself is uh, struggling, you can just send an email. Uh, the information is on the website and we protect this room so we don't uh, put out the links. So you have to write to info at changelifesocialize.com. You will find it on the Global Empowerment Hub website and write I need crisis room access and then we will send you the link. So we will not post it anywhere, but if you need some help if you want to reach out we have psychologists and uh, counselors in that room 
every Sunday. So until the summit is here. So feel free to join us and ask questions. Awesome. Okay. Thank you very much. I think this was it. Everyone is saying thank you. Thank you. And thank you. <laughs> and thank you. So I believe we gave a big awareness. Uh, we kept it on the, on, on the positive side, on a meaning that we are raising awareness. We don't want to scare anyone. And please be aware also that we are not specialists here. Uh, Alia was sharing her experience and she was referring to people who are specialized on this uh, subject. So please search for the correct uh, correct person and someone who is qualified if you have problems, consider psychologist because yeah, suicide is a serious issue. So um, it's important to have a professional who, who is a professional in this uh, <laughs> area. <laughs> right. <laughs> And if you have any anything to 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 um, you know just to want to talk and and need some direction that I'm I'm really uh, advising you to reach out and check out uh, AWS AWAS of us <laughs> right and uh, you will find more information here. <laughs> okay. Anything that I left out, Alia? <laughs> so, so good, and I must congratulate you, Andrea, for this. Uh, I read. I read, I was able to read on uh, the Global Empowerment Summit. Uh, so you're awesome. Uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Yeah, three weeks to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, half time. At least half time is done. So now we can go for the second half. <laughs> you can do it. Yeah. yeah. We'll have a nice sleep tomorrow and I can continue. So thank you very much, Ali. I have a, have a beautiful Sunday evening. And thank you, uh, thank you for too. your share. And for being here with us today. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Andrea. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching, guys. Thank Bye. you.